Welcome to another episode of Fire Engineering's Training Minutes. My name's Adam Hansen. I'm Anthony Deco. And today, we're continuing our discussion on rooftop units, otherwise referred to as RTUs. Instead of calling for cooling in the building, when the building is calling for heat, what happens is the burners kick on and the flames actually enter those holes down there where Anthony's pointing. When this happens, that black motor up there, referred to as an inducer motor, helps to pull that, uh, the heat and the flame into these tubes. And as the heat and the flames go through these tubes, they warm up the metal. This creates for a condition where the air meant to be conditioned for inside the building passes over these heated tubes, is conditioned, and then is pushed out by the blower motor into the actual ductwork and into the building. But what happens when we have an actual cracked or compromised heat exchanger? Many times we get calls for an odor of something burning inside a building, um, many times a con commercial type building. So we get there, we walk inside, and all of a sudden it's not your classic electrical odor that we all know as firefighters. It's not your rubber burning, which would be a burnt out belt in a RTU. It's not your class A's that would be wood or paper or plastics, but it's kind of an unknown odor. At this point, I would highly suspect that it might be because of a malfunctioning rooftop unit on the rooftop. So at this point, we're going to want to investigate for a cracked heat exchanger. And unlike a worn out belt, this could create an actual serious hazard that could endanger the citizens that we're sworn to protect on the interior of the building. When dealing with a cracked heat exchanger in an RTU, there's two potential emergencies that can arise. You see right here, that's an obvious hole that could be allowing for the products of combustion, and most importantly, CO, to be emitting from that hole cause that CO to come out and as the fresh air comes by these tubes to heat that air up and condition it, that CO can mix with uh, that good air and cause it to spill over into the building as the, uh, it's spit out into the ductwork. Another emergency is something we refer to as flame rollback. Instead of the flames coming in nice and smoothly through these tubes and ag exiting out into the atmosphere, you can get actual differential pressures on the tubes and the outside ambient environment. When this happens, instead of the flames coming through smoothly, it's going to cause a negative pressure that's going to push the flames back and they're going to come out those holes there. As you can see where Anthony's pointing, there is charring right above. We all know that fire and smoke rises, so that is indicative that one of these tubes over on this side is cracked. Two other signs of a cracked heat exchanger which would result in flame rollback would be the burning of these wires. If there's any burning wires in the compartment of the burner, that's a sign. And also, the back side of the service panel if you take the service panel off and find significant burning and charring to the back side of the service panel, these are all three signs that are indicative of flame rollback. Depending upon the make and model of the RTU that you're dealing with, it might be easy to find the heat exchanger or it might be a little bit more difficult, but once you open up the service panels, you should be able to find it. This right here is obvious. You have about half inch by a half inch hole and this could be enough to create CO emanating out and spilling over into that good air meant for inside of the building. However, just like with the worn out belts and the burnt out belts, it's not always that simple. This seam right here connects the top part of the tube with the bottom part of the tube. And just like anything in your house or in the fire service, it's always going to break at the weakest point. This seam is the weakest point, and that is big enough to potentially create CO in an ideal H environment. Again, it could be even tougher. We have these black arrows pointing to tiny pinholes. This might not be enough to create an actual dangerous condition or an ideal H environment. However, the American Gas Association states that anytime there is any crack, no matter how big or small, the unit must be taken out of service immediately and the heat exchanger must be replaced. And to me personally, I think that that speaks volumes to the seriousness 
of this type of emergency right here when we're dealing with cracked heat exchangers. Unlike a worn out belt, which many times activates the 911 system, but seldom is a true emergency, a cracked heat exchanger is and can be a true emergency. We need to shut it down, lock it out, tag it out, and inform not only a licensed HVAC technician, but possibly a gas company representative too. And this comes down to having a good rapport with these outside agencies, because if you call them and they weren't needed, hopefully you have that good rapport and they're not gonna get upset with you when you call at two o'clock in the morning, but they're needed there. Again, my name's Adam Hansen. I'm Anthony Deco. And thanks for tuning in to another episode of Fire Engineering's Training Minutes.